you know, go big or go home right. here. That should be the theme, right? They should have a go big or go home. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. It's the transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. In this episode, we revisit three that take us on a journey through all American eateries, Check, Please! Bay Area style. From season seven, Nancy Good steps up to new heights and back in time at her sophisticated spot. This historic Knob Hill destination in San Francisco is named after our nation's four most famous 19th century railroad tycoons. Discover classy American cuisine in elegant surroundings at the Big Four restaurant. The Big Four is such a special place because all of the elements come together in this fabulous room, which is so historical. The polished service, the distinctive dishes. There is no other place like this anywhere in San Francisco. I'm Gloria Ciccaroni Nails, and this is the Big Four restaurant, and it's in the Huntington Hotel. To me, inspiration happens at the butcher block in the back of the kitchen. It is taking my knowledge and bringing it together with, with local ingredients and with layered techniques, producing a very sophisticated dish that we can present to our guests. Menus have changed so much since the 70s. It's gone from duck a l'orange to duck breast from a certain ranch sous vide with clementines. You know, that's how food has changed. I've kept up with that change by education, uh, travel, and uh, playing in the kitchen is my big deal. When I think about my staff, I, I, I know that loyalty binds us together. We're very close, and it's a big family. I consider that to be a real blessing. I really want everyone to leave the Big Four restaurant with the true San Francisco experience because the Big Four is a very classy joint. Okay, Nancy, the, it's quiz time now. Who are the Big Four? Oh, the Big Four, oh my God. <laughs> It's Crocker, 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 Hopkins, Huntington, Huntington, and Stanford. You got Stanford. it. So what is it about this classic spot that brings you back time and time again? Just that, that it is a classic spot. Mm -hmm. It also feels like a private club. And you can just go sit at the bar. You can go sit mm -hmm. at the bar. There's but there's a piano also, player playing when you walk there's in. There's live piano. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a lounge. Uh, when I have lounge food, there are two dishes that I like most of all. One is the fresh turkey club mm -hmm. and the other one is the chicken pot pie. The chicken pot pie has large pieces of chicken that are totally moist. I do not know how that happens but they're mm -hmm. wonderful. In the dining room I particularly like the arctic char. Mm -hmm. You cannot go wrong whatever it is you have there in my view. The dining room is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is quiet mm -hmm. and the service is right there at all times. It's dreamy. How are the sugar bowls? The sugar bowls were clean. Oh, the okay. bowls, they have okay. my stamp of approval there. <laughs> I have no, no worries in that department. Uh, we probably took a little longer than we had anticipated dining. And the best thing about a restaurant is when you can do that and not notice it. In the they, dining room or lounge? In the dining room. We had a little bit of everything. First of all, if there's a beef cheek involved, I'm yeah. on. Yeah. So beef cheeks where we knew immediately <laughs> we're going to be on there. <laughs> Two of us had the uh, frisée à la don, and it's uh, a tricky salad to make because when you have a, a salad made with bacon, you really in your vinaigrette need about 50% vinegar yeah. to kind of match that fat there. And mm -hmm. I thought that was the only thing that didn't really sing for us. It didn't seem like it salad place to me and with uh, 
Foie gras ending pretty soon here in California. This seemed like the place to have foie gras. Absolutely. Ah, you were going foie gras. And Absolutely. she knows. Gloria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gloria, she knows she how knows. to do mm -hmm. foie gras. With that foie gras appetizer, it was just that silky melt in your mouth. Foie gras atop uh, brioche, mm -hmm. and then with a uh, caramelized pineapple. And it was a very rich dish, but then again, we are dining uh, inside the Huntington yeah. on the top of Knob Hills, so, right. you know, go big or go home right. here. That should be <laughs> the theme, right? They should have a go big or go, go home. home. Yeah, you're, you're dining <laughs> Somewhere yeah. named after the railroad tycoons, yeah. act yeah. like a railroad Absolutely. tycoon. Right. You know, dress up for the occasion, That's wear right. a suit and, and you tie. certainly do place. feel like a railroad tycoon you in do. that decor. You, you know, really no. feel. They allow you yeah. to feel like that. Yeah. It's really no, lovely. They, they don't make restaurants like these yeah. anymore. No, this is the this is a dying breed. This is the yeah. last yeah. of this kind Where of restaurant. Where you can really feel like that in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The best entree out of all three restaurants doing this show and this experience, without a doubt, without question, was her chicken, which can seem simple right. to many people and many things in restaurants. Restaurants, let me tell you, it was the best entree I've had in a long, long time. Again, really moist and really, really well, perfectly cooked. Right. You know, well, we, we can't talk further about this without talking about proteins. Uh, <laughs> two weeks out of the year, she does Wild Game <laughs> Week where That's antelope, right. yak. That's right. So many ostrich. proteins. Ostrich. You in November can really cover all the bases. Game is her specialty. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated when you have a restaurant that features game, to have Domaine Tempiers and Vacuras. Well, that's, I was just about to get to the wine list because. kind of gutsy, gamey yeah. wines that are available. Yeah. Yes, they have some really elegant wines, but they also have got the down and dirty wines. That's that'll, right. You need a little southern roll. You gotta go to Gameville when you you're having that. <laughs> yeah. For my entree, which was elk, a sort of yeah. game, great filet mignon almost, with a little bit more of a gamey type flair to the taste, and then let's put some nice foie gras on top of it, and then it's not so lean anymore. But then the foie gras starts to melt, and then combined with this uh, truffle broth, and you've got this luxurious meat, the foie gras, the truffle, and then they also have a Parmesan potato souffle uh, crepe. And I don't know necessarily if it works with the dish, but it certainly com helps enhance the luxurious uh, factor. But, uh, you know, I, I think it was $37, $38, and I just have to think, if I were to do that again, I would go somewhere where it's a little more exciting. The cuisine is, is interesting enough to not just be, you know, almost feel like banquet food. And you can learn about westward expansion. You can I'm learn about westward expansion. I'm excited <laughs> about going back in November for, <laughs> to try all of her different meats. All of her different meats. Yeah. All right, this right. is Absolutely. your spot, Nancy. Give us a summary. Okay, it is a wonderful place to go for ambiance, atmosphere, piano bar. You can eat in the lounge, you can eat in the dining room. It's a, a, an exceptional value, in my view. And Stu. Beautiful dining room, great food, fantastic chef. I'd go back. All right, Trevor. I don't think I can call it an exceptional value like uh, some other places in the city. I would go back on somebody else's dime, gladly. Probably at that ex that price point, I would probably go elsewhere, but I would certainly be happy to go back to the bar. If you would like to try the Big Four restaurant, it's at the Huntington Hotel in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-771-1140. It's open every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $75. Our next guest from season six is an event planner and floral designer. Chelsea Bowman simply blooms at the thought of the perfect party. But she doesn't limit merrymaking to just evenings. She celebrates mornings at her place with its hot pink walls lined with cute pig pics. In San Francisco, it's Pork Store Cafe. <laughs> My name is Michael Nader Musla, and I'm the owner of the Pork Store Cafe. Well, the Pork Store was established in uh, 1916, early 20s. It was a butcher shop, and it converted to a restaurant years ago in the 60s and the 50s. And in the late 70s, they pulled out the front board from the windows on top, and they found the Pork Store stained glass, and they re-established Pork Store Cafe in 1979. Everything good? Yes. All right. I started here as a busboy, and I learned most of the steps to be a waiter and to be a cook, and I graduated pork store, basically. And I've been doing this here for about 28 years. 
it is the pork strip because of, of what it offers the people, so we do not deviate too much out of what is love, the basic breakfast, the eggs and the sausages and a pancake. We add a lot of stuff on the side, but we keep our basic core for our core loyals. The cooks here, as well as most of the staff, they don't change often. People love their job, they love the customers, and they love me, of course. The cooks are happy, and happier cooks give you better food. Okay, Chelsea, you say that you meet your girlfriends here, kind of sex in the city style. Now you're talking yeah. my language there when you <laughs> hang out on a Sunday morning, right? Exactly. And pork store is where you go. Pork store is definitely where we go. We stand in line on Sunday morning, usually rehashing what happened the night prior. We're trying to rehash what happened the <laughs> night prior. And sit around the table, talk, and enjoy good food. Definitely have a go-to dish. It's called Eggs in a Tasty Nest, and it's crisp hash browns on a plate. It's topped with sauteed green peppers, onions, and tons of garlic. It's topped with an oozy, cheesy sauce, two eggs, and a side of biscuits. And usually with those biscuits, we get a side of gravy to share with the table. And that dish um, with some good friends, and you can't go wrong. Well, that'll cure any hangover too, right there yeah. on Saturday night, huh? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> like you, I had the biscuits and gravy. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I have to say, I mean, I grew up in the Midwest. It's so hard to find good biscuits and gravy. The biscuits were homemade, Definitely. they broke apart, they were fluffy, and the gravy was fabulous. I mean, the gravy was warm, it was spiced, it was a really nice texture, and it just tasted homemade, so I mean, I just Did loved it. Did you have it. the regular gravy or the veggie gravy? I would never order veggie gravy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pesto-based pesto gravy, it's like an and oxymoron. it's delicious. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I love the biscuits. I thought they were just Yay. blow <laughs> blow you out of the park. And the old fashioned hash browns were just nice and crispy on the outside, but still also had the airiness and fluffiness of fresh potatoes inside. I I just love those dishes. And the pancakes. Yeah. yeah. I did have the pancakes. I had, I had the banana pancakes. <laughs> when you said fluffy, I'm like, and the pancakes. Yeah, no, no. The pancakes were also amazing. Uh, I had the banana pancakes, mm -hmm. and they were just enormous. The, the sizes of these portions were huge. Uh, we actually got a short order of the pancakes, and we still, amongst you the three of enough. us, couldn't, yeah, yeah. We couldn't yeah. finish it. Yeah. Really, really great pancakes. Did you get stuck in a line when you went? When I rolled in, which was probably around 8.45 on a Saturday, I beat the line, I squeezed into that last spot in the counter, and I just love sitting at the counter right in front of where they're cooking Yay. the food. <laughs> but when I got out of there, there was that line. There must have been 15, 20 people yeah. there when I walked out. Because no one's yeah. up at 8.45 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to say that it's such an interesting store in itself because you look at that sign, the pork store, the glass work is just exquisite. Yeah. And it's a, that is one of the finest signs uh, in itself as a work of art. So it, it, it was very shocking to sort of see it transformed into this kind of retro diner inside that old store. So I really like the, the, the ambiance, you know. It really feels like uh, uh, going into the past somewhat. The architect in you coming out. It yeah, is, yeah. it is, I must say. Those details <laughs> always matter. I did have a little bit of a different view. I, I would say that for me, it was a little bit on the grungy side. Mm -hmm. And I know it's hate, but uh, I, I, I just, <laughs> uh, you know, it felt a little bit like I was dining in a kind of a subway station for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it definitely had character. That's what's great about it, though. You can go in looking like whatever you do on a Saturday or Sunday morning. Go in and know you're going to feel like you're at home. And that's how my girlfriends and I feel. We go into the pork store. We know we can say and do whatever we want, have our cup of coffee, enjoy food, and just have a great time. Now, they also have, of course, breakfast, but they do have lunches, mm -hmm. too. And they've got burgers at lunch, and, mm -hmm. and they're known, certainly, for pork chops and things like that. Their club sandwiches are fantastic. Um, the tuna salad sandwich my friend Claudia has quite often. The corned beef hash is fantastic. It's not typical or tr traditional corned beef hash. It's mixed together with onions and of course garlic. They're known for their garlic flavors. Uh, yeah. You know, when I first heard we were doing Pork Store Cafe, <laughs> I, I love pork and I was just really drooling at the mouth to go there. <laughs> Uh, Can but, I get you? <laughs> <laughs> but the pork to me was a little bit on the tough side and a little mm -hmm. bit dry. And I'm not sure if they're having a bad day or, or what, but um, it didn't really hit it for me. 
I have to say that the other other things that I tried though were really spot on, and uh, like we mentioned, the hash browns and the biscuits were amongst the best I've ever had. And so, That's great. all right, this is your restaurant. Yes. Now wrap it up for us, Chelsea. Pork Store Cafe is definitely worth its weight in bacon <laughs> for <laughs> consistent breakfast with good friends and great wait staff. The Pork Store is it. All right, and Robert. I think that if I need to carb up before a big hike uh, up Mount Tam. I'm heading to the pork store because I wasn't hungry till six o'clock. <laughs> okay, and feeder. For me, don't be fooled by the name. Pork Store Cafe does not have good pork, but it does <laughs> have generous portion sizes. Uh, yes. With so many Bay Area breakfast places, I probably won't be returning. If you would like to try the Pork Store Cafe, it's on Haight between Ashbury and Masonic in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-864-6981. It's open every day for breakfast and lunch, reservations are not accepted, and the average tab per person is around $20. Our final guest from season three, business professional Patrick Reddington, accuses his restaurant of sorcery. Every dish is sprinkled with mood-enhancing mystery. The sublime combination of food, wine, and service wraps him in happiness. His cozy spot in Berkeley is called La Lime's Restaurant. Our cuisine probably used to be called California cuisine, rather eclectic. Now it's called contemporary cuisine. And our philosophy is to showcase just the best ingredients that we can get our hands on. Typically seasonal, local, organic, uh, the finest meats that we can get from Sonoma or California. Lalim's is a mom and pop operation. It's the opposite of corporate. It's not in a business district. Haig's mother, who still lives with them, um, Navard, um, she's like the grandma. She's 85 and she still comes every morning, folds napkins, cleans silver, where she peels a bowl of garlic for us every day. If she didn't peel our garlic, we wouldn't have enough garlic sometimes. What I really love about working here is that everyone gets to be creative. So we have Latin cooks, formally trained uh, culinary students, and everyone gets to submit ideas. We all get to have creative energy. I think the, the diner gets to benefit from that, and it just keeps it more exciting and fun to work here. Okay, Patrick, I, you use the word magic a lot yes, to describe La Limes. I do, <laughs> because I feel like they can take my mood and transform it, and they can take my idea of what great California cuisine is about and transform it as well. I just love every dish that I've ever had there. And you've been going repeatedly for years? As much as I can. It is an expensive place. Right. So like, you know, say the parents are in town. Ah, there you go. Or, you know, you've got, Smart. you know, someone you want to impress or you're <laughs> celebrating a special occasion. I go, it's my number one pick because I feel like, you know, it is an expensive place, but you get every dime out of it. And uh, there's artistry coming out out of that kitchen. There's just, you know, brilliance. Brilliance. All right, Dan, do you, do you feel the same way? Are you enchanted by La Limes? I thought the food was quite good, actually. I went with my girlfriend. We actually went on Super Bowl Sunday. So I don't know. Yeah, that's what kind of boyfriend I am. I know. So we went on Super Bowl wow. Sunday. You're a winner, oh, I gotta tell you. You're you. a keeper. Uh, a triathlon. Yeah, yeah, you're a keeper. <laughs> but we, when we walked in, we were the youngest people in the entire place. It seemed like everyone else was probably, it was a very a lot older than us, but it just felt like a little bit odd for me to, to be there. It didn't seem like in my wheelhouse in terms of restaurants that I usually All go to. All the young to. people were watching the Super Bowl. Uh, That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, probably. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I got a fair, you know, summation of the restaurant from, uh -huh. from that experience. From atmosphere point. Exactly, from atmosphere point. point. But walking in there was awesome. I, the, you know, fresh orchids on the tables and everything, and people were having intimate conversations. It just right. seemed like a really nice restaurant to go to there for a special occasion. There's sort of a zen occasion. feel, yeah. You're, zen yeah. feel. Yeah. Very calm when you get there. The waiters are really attentive. I really enjoyed the service at the restaurant. The portions I thought were great. We started out with uh, a sashimi of, of yellowfin tuna, which was mm -hmm. awesome, uh, with the edamame mm -hmm. beans. I yeah, that too. That's so good. Yeah, and the sesame crackers, yeah. I thought it was excellent. And it wasn't actually 
too bad. I think it was like you know, ten, eleven dollars for mm -hmm. that for that appetizer, and it was really good. They gave you a big piece of sashimi for it. Uh, the seafood stew I thought was awesome. <gasps> they had. Did you? Did you oh, guys have, did you no, have I should have. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was excellent. It had okay. rockfish in it and mussels and shrimp, and I thought the sauce was just excellent. I, we saved some of the bread. We you know we used with bread and butter to dip more of it in there because we yeah. we finished all the broth. It was all, all right. gone, right. and then we had the yellow tail tuna with the lentils and then the blood oranges and that was excellent as well the fish was cooked perfectly um, all the flavors were great and we just had a great experience at the restaurant and then we we don't well, hang on because I, oh, yeah. I saw Katie oh, over there really shaking, her head, about it. Well, shaking her head yeah. I wish I had ordered what you ordered oh. because oh. I love seafood uh, I love all food I yeah. love food um, and now I, and I've met you and we're in love. <laughs> but um, oh, you're so I, easy. And I ordered the French onion soup. It was freezing okay. out. Although they call it uh, onion soup with Gruyere toast. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. It showed up. There was no broth. It was like mm. a bunch of pureed onions with a piece of toast and some cheese on top mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. And it tasted good, right. but it didn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't soup. It was really right. some pureed onions with some toast. Some gruyere. Yeah. But yeah, and then and they were rushing us, and uh, it was the middle of the really? week. Really. And it was like, why are you like? She said right away. She said, okay, if you're gonna order something like the cassoulet, you should order right now. So I did. Because I thought, okay, I'm gonna try the duck, uh -huh. and I ordered it, but it came right after the soup left. It, it, I felt very rushed, mm. and unfortunately, the cassoulet was good. I was like, oh, good, I'm getting some broth, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then I bite into the duck, and it was cold, Ooh. Huh. and I really couldn't believe it. And I, I can't believe that. I, I couldn't. I can't believe He's it. in shock over here. I though. am. This, I've yeah. had so many. I good really couldn't right. believe it. Well, mm -hmm. did you take a Vicodin before you went to the restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was sober. I was sober. I had to drive over the bridge. <laughs> they do have a lovely wine list. I hope you ordered they wine. They did. You know what? Very I have affordable, to tell you, under forty dollars. I was very yeah. aware of that beautiful yeah. wine list. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. It was amazing, the, and the wine the was good. The prices are so good on that wine list. Yeah, yeah, you wine is really good. Spanish good. and French wines for it under was $40. really yeah. good. And then I hear yeah, about yeah. what you ordered, and yeah. I and I almost ordered that. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was awesome. And they have great lamb dishes too. The I mean, lamb oh. looked great. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I, I had it that good. with uh, great citrus and mm -hmm. couscous. The mm. Fresh yeah. lamb. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. It did. It looked really good. I saw Absolutely. it. Well, I had I had dessert. We had this apple chousson. I don't yeah. even know how to pronounce it. That's right. right. Um, and it was a caramelized apples, and there was a pastry. And then it was topped with vanilla bean ice cream. I thought it was awesome. It was really good. It was huge, and we barely could could finish it all. I had the angels pillows, which is such I think mm -hmm. an inventive dessert. Little bits of cheese ravioli, soft sweet cheeses covered in a blueberry sauce, a very oh, sweet huh? blueberry sauce, and I'd never had anything like that for dessert before. Mm -hmm. And it was just the right degree of warm. It wasn't hot. It mm -hmm. was, you know, a little bit above room temperature, soft and comfortable, and just absolutely delightful and sweet, and washed it down with a glass of port. It went so well. Did you feel like you got your money's worth? I think I got my money's worth, definitely. I think that it is uh, an anniversary date parents in town type restaurant, but it, it was great. I would go back, definitely. You would go back. Whenever I go back, no matter whose dime I'm on, they're turning each penny into gold. <laughs> I love wow. this place. I, you know, every bite I've ever had there has been just absolutely delightful. Okay, and Katie, you got it. I would only go back with Patrick, basically. Okay. <laughs> I'm You're going on. with Patrick. <laughs> but, um, but yes, I, it, I needed more atmosphere, too. It was a little too... Hmm. Uh, boring might be the word. Mm -hmm. It was a little boring for me, but I think if I went with Patrick, I have, I'd have a good time. All I right. I think the food is upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you would like to try Laleem's restaurant, it's on Gilman and Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-527-9838. It's open for dinner every night and brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. If you missed these places the first time around, we hope you've enjoyed a look back at three spots in the Bay Area. Now you have another chance to check them out. From season seven, Nancy Good shared her historic Knob Hill destination, the Big Four Restaurant. Event planner and floral designer, Chelsea Bowman from season six, showed us her jolly spot in San Francisco, Pork Store Cafe. 
And finally, from Season 3, business professional Patrick Reddington shared his cozy, feel-good location in Berkeley, La Lime's Restaurant. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Or better yet, post your favorite food shots on Instagram with the hashtag Bay Area Bites and have a chance to see your food pics on the show. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the wines and libations we're drinking today. So join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco and I'll see you then. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by the Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com It's the transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com.